All right, everybody, we are officially started. I've got two crazy ketos on with me today. So Joe is really the official primal health coach. Mm -hmm. Rachel is his partner in crime here. That is um, so, but, you know, Coach's Corner, as we all know, is just the opportunity for our students and graduates to hear from people that are out there doing it and just being able to ask questions. So please, 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 this is meant to be interactive, everybody. Ask questions, make comments, we'll read them. If you want to actually speak, um, then just, you know, jump on, give us a little wave, you know, but but we want you to kind of jump on and ask questions. So I, I'm going to um, introduce the two of them, but I think the best way to do that is to share a comment already in the chat by Janice who says that she's been following your YouTube channel, Two Crazy Ketos, for a long time. And she says, I lost 70 pounds on keto. She did PHC to help others to find benefits of the lifestyle, but Two Crazy Ketos has been so supportive of her journey, which I know just hit you right here when you heard that, which is awesome. It really does. Yeah, it's so great. Okay, so let's start with a little bit of an intro. Joe, introduce yourself and Rachel, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about... I guess what led you down this journey? I know it's a long story, uh, but that's okay. We've got some time and people can ask some questions along the way. Okay. Um, so I'm Joe and I was obese pretty much my entire life. From the time I was 10 years old, I was shopping in the Husky section. I was always overweight. I was over, always over obese. obese. I, would, I would go up and down a little bit, but like even, you know, when I was in high school, I weighed like 220 pounds. And then I would lose a little bit of weight during the summer and then put it back on. And in two, in 1990, I had a severe car accident, shattered my ankle in over 30 places. I spent two years on crutches and that really became a downhill because now anything that I ever enjoyed doing for any kind of movement or anything was now gone. I was told yeah. I would never walk again. I was able to walk, but I walked with the severe limps. I've tried to not let it stop me. And I topped out at, I, I like to say my last known weight was 285 pounds, but I know I was well over 300. I just got to that point where once I saw 285, I was like, I never want to see 300. So I became in a denial person and um, my sizes went up like three or four more sizes, but I never got on the scale. So I know I was well over 300 pounds. And then um, I tried doing some CrossFit and then my CrossFit closed. And I was like, now what do I do? And uh, I ran upon keto, did it for weight loss. I read a couple of Mark's books and uh, I understood like the premise behind it. And I knew it was going to work for weight loss. I did not know all of the health benefits, but I did lose about 90 pounds over six months. But then wow. once I realized the health benefits, that's where it became just like my lifestyle forever. Yeah. And I had a very similar journey. I have been obese my entire life and I'm also a career dieter. So I have tried everything. And if you don't think that somebody can drink an entire stock pot of cabbage soup, <laughs> this is the girl who has done it, right? Because like whatever is like a crazy diet, I have, I've absolutely tried it. Um, by the time Joe was starting keto, um, I had worked myself into a, a 500 calorie a day um, starvation diet. Basically, wow. the only thing that I ate for two solid years was a cup of oatmeal and basically a dipping cup of yogurt. And I managed to gain 70 pounds on that because yeah. I am so extra. But you know, you're living in a severe calorie deficit. My metabolism did what I asked it to do, which is just like totally mm -hmm. be terrible. So I went on keto to save our marriage because he is eating delicious food and I am not eating delicious food. So uh, I did do keto once and I was afraid. I mean, if you're going from 500 calories a day and then asking yourself to trust the process 
and try to incorporate more food, like you're just scared. So, um, I, I dropped out, but once I saw the health benefits that Joe is experiencing after, you know, a solid six months, then I came back around and gave it another try because Joe was able to get rid of all of his medication. He no longer needed pain pills. And so I wanted to support him in this. Um, I saw him gain back his mobility. Um, when we got married, cause we are a second marriage and a blended family. I actually pushed Joe around in a wheelchair for our honeymoon. So, um, the fact that Joe was able to get rid of wheelchairs and ride on scooters and all of those things and really look forward to a, a fully mobile life and future, you know, I wanted to help with that. So I jumped back into keto. I'm so thankful that I did. And as a result, uh, my mom also started keto because, uh, we had lost my father to a heart attack and I don't usually inf like push my lifestyle on other people, but I forced that woman. I straight up <laughs> forced her. She is the one person that I'm willing to get into an argument with. Um, she went ahead and started keto also was able to completely avoid having to have a stents put in her heart. Um, no more blockages in her heart. And she also reversed her type two diabetes after 20 plus years of it. So, um, it, it has been a tremendous blessing for our family. And once we were able to help our own family, we wanted to, of course, share this lifestyle with others. Cause I think that that's probably a reason why a lot of people come mm -hmm. to eating coaching, right? Because you don't want to keep this message to yourself. You want other people to get healthy also. Yeah. So you both find success following this lifestyle. And it, it it's like, you hear stories like this and it's no wonder that it feels it, it, like, it, it, I hear people say that whole keto diet, it's almost cultish, right? That, but it's because you hear stories like that and you have these tremendous transformations that when keto work, you know, and I do believe health benefits that everybody works to tell you, he kind of moves in and out of it, you know, but Mark's been a healthy, well, I'm saying healthy in air quotes, a lean person, his entire life. He will be the first one to tell you he wasn't always healthy, you know, getting, getting rid of grains and getting rid of sugars and getting rid of all those processed carbohydrates made him well. So he was not obese. He was always very lean, but he was still very sick in a lot of ways. So, um, you know, I just, it's just such a tremendous success story. And I, I want to hear about how you arrived at the decision to start sharing. Was there an aha moment where you guys were like, we've got to do something with this. And where did you start? Did you start with YouTube? Did you start? Oh, you guys are looking at each other, you know, fill us in about kind of what this process looked like. So there was not an aha moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was a lot of people watching the incredible shrinking couple. Right. <laughs> so we we really have no friends prior to keto. I mean, all of our friends are honestly within this lifestyle, within eating a primal type lifestyle. Yeah. Both of us were very, very introverted. Um, I did landscaping and I um, was a sports official. And then we were the children's pastors at our church. And everybody at our church knew us at 300 pounds a piece. And all of a sudden we're losing weight. And so people are asking us, and now again, we are children's directors for a reason because kids don't judge, right? Yeah. Adults judge kids. Don't, we don't want anything to do with adults because adults are going to judge us because of our weight and everything <laughs> yeah. else. So people are starting to notice and they're starting to ask, what are you doing? And then you would spend 20 or 30 minutes telling them I've cut out all pasta. I've cut out all grains. I've cut out all sugar. And I didn't, I never even used the word keto because keto is like a four letter word. Yeah. I, I like to tell people we just eat whole foods. We shop the outer aisle of the grocery store. I tell people don't ever tell your doctor you're doing keto. Yeah. What are you doing? You, I love Dr. Ken Berry has the per, the perfect term. It's the proper human diet it encompasses keto or carnivore. It You can call paleo. It's what our body's designed to eat. Not all the grains and all that nonsense and all, especially the overly processed foods. But we would tell people for 20, 30 minutes and then they would be like, yeah, that doesn't work. Or you're going to die. Or what about your cholesterol? And 
so one day we came home from church and we started talking to each other. And again, blended family. We've never experienced marriage to each other without children. And we started going, our youngest at the time was 18. And we're like, we are about to be empty nesters. We better figure out what we're going to do with each other. Cause we don't know what it's like to be married without children. Mm-hmm. So Rachel's like, what do you want to do? And I'm like, let's start a YouTube channel. I was like, you crazy, <laughs> crazy joke. You crazy boy. It was a complete joke, but we were like, listen, people keep asking us. I'm tired of telling them and then telling me this doesn't work. So what if we just put our story out on YouTube? It's not like anybody's ever going to follow us. We had no idea what we were doing. (laughs) And this way we can say to someone, go watch this. And then if you still want to talk afterwards, then we'll talk to you. We figured it was a time saver. Neither one of us were very good in front of people. Rachel would have to go in like she had the worst anxiety. She would have to like throw up for like an hour before ever turning on the camera. (laughs) But that's where it came from. And then it quickly evolved into, okay, we need to help people. Yeah, because once we were, you know, you're in a certain lifestyle, whatever you've, you know, chosen to, you know, follow, you're looking for other people like you, you know, you're looking for people who are also, you know, making the decision to change, you know, their life. You know, if you, if you're trying to get into some sort of athleticism, even like you're looking for like anybody else doing a 5k, like let's do it together. So we started attending, um, conferences. And when we did, we noticed that there was a lot of people like us attending conferences, but they were seemingly in isolation. Like it was a whole bunch of little islands all coming to this. And we thought, wow, we know what it's like to feel like it's hard to make friends. It's hard to go from being very introverted to putting yourself out there. And we thought, well, maybe if you know, we could help to build a community, then it would feel safer for people to interact because we know that um, it's better to, to not be in isolation. It's not good, especially when you're trying to make such a drastic lifestyle change to feel like no one gets me, no one understands me. And you're going to have to make not just one choice to eat healthy, but thousands of choices every single day and week. Sometimes, you know, if you're like us and you're going from like a very carby life, a sugary life, and you're going into the holiday season, like we are right now. And suddenly I can go into Kohl's and be surrounded by like candy at the register. So I have to make these very hard decisions and then I have to do it alone. So we felt like, gosh, you know, if we could help to build a community, then you'd have accountability and you'd have people feeling like they were supported. And so that was just really our great desire. And so then, you know, Joe was kind of like, all right, I feel like we are successfully helping to build this community, but we need to do this responsibly. I need to reach out and get some extra like training and get certified and know, you know, like we felt like, okay, we're making good decisions and we're seeing the results in our lab work and we're seeing the results in the scale and like how we feel in our bodies. But it felt important for us to reach out for like certification and just to know that, you know, that, you know, then you feel like, okay, now I feel safer in this space to kind of, you know, lead people. Now I will say that. So we did not lose our weight on camera. By the time we started our YouTube channel, we'd already both lost. I'd lost over a hundred pounds. Rachel had lost, I think like 70 pounds at the time. So this, it really became, we weren't, we didn't even realize we were coaching through YouTube. We were trying to help people be accountable. But what really happened for us where, you know, like we were like, we we don't want you to fall into the same mistakes. We, if there's a mistake to be made with eating any type of primal way of eating, we've probably made it. Yeah. We have tried everything from eating super high fat to super low fat to high protein to no protein to calorie restriction. The best thing I can tell anybody is calorie counting doesn't work. There, It will never, ever work. You have to look at grams of protein and fat and that's it. But the big jump for us where we realized people make mistakes was when keto products started coming out Yeah, because people didn't know ingredients. And what got us 
And this is really how we, we really fell in love with a lot of what Mark Sasson talks about was we started eating keto on hot dogs and mustard. We had no money. You know, we had for years, we made a, an, in, a joke in our house, like how cheap can we feed our family? And we got to the point where we were able to feed five people in our family for $3 a day. Yeah. Oh. We were couponers. It was yakisoba noodles, buy one, get one. I mean, you talk about diets. We literally had a progressive suit diet where all we did was eat progressive <laughs> suit yeah. and we gained weight. Um, but what happened was we finally realized, okay, we're saving money. I'm not spending $200 a month on medicine anymore. I'm not spending $8 a day on Starbucks. Let's take that money and put it back into better quality food. Yeah. So we started, the first thing I said to Rachel is we need to get better eggs. And I remember her going, there is no way we are spending $5 a dozen on eggs. <laughs> and, and I was like, okay, but the more research I look at, I'm like, it's the cheapest protein source you can eat. Yeah. And so many of the vitamins and nutrients are going to be bioavailable. Let's start there. The next thing we started learning was you need to dump seed oils. And we ate a lot of mayonnaise. So we finally said, okay, we're going to stop buying the Hellman's mayonnaise for 99 cents. And we went to the store and Publix had buy one, get one free avocado oil mayonnaise. So Ooh. we picked it up and we come home and we were like, I can't believe we just spent $5 on mayonnaise. Like yeah. this was like unheard of. It was for a us. big change for us. And we ate it. And then a couple of days later, I, just them looking at it. And it was like Hellman's or Heinz or one of those brands. And I turn it over and I look at the label and I'm like, the first ingredient, soybean oil. Yeah. And I was like, they lied to us. They tricked us. So they called it avocado oil mayonnaise because there was avocado oil in there, but it was, it was the of it. fifth ingredient. <laughs> it wasn't the first ingredient. Yeah. Oh, God. And we immediately said, okay, we're going to, on our YouTube channel, we're going to now start doing product reviews and we're going to pull every product that if we find a major one, if they're selling it in the store, it is fair game. Mm -hmm. They put themselves in Publix, in Costco, we're going to buy it and we're going to really go over this. And we list everything on five things, like how good are the ingredients? Does it keto? Like, is it like high in carbohydrate? How does it taste? And how much does it cost? Like, is it worth it? And would we even recommend you buying it? And not everything is the cleanest ingredients in the world. But mm -hmm. we started going, like, we have to educate people that these food companies only care about one thing, making money. They don't care about your health. Because for a long time, I was like, I think a lot of people are that just nostalgic, you know, the there's great marketing, they're, they're spending tons of money to market products to us. And I mean, I feel kind of like a chomp. But there was, I mean, how many times have I cried at a Cheerios commercial where I see like this, this animated bee circling grandpa and his you know, granddaughter, and they're having like this precious moment. And I'm thinking this bee loves grandpa. Like this bee is animated, Rachel, like <laughs> it's not capable of loving grandpa. So yeah. grandpa's got to read labels if he wants to be around for his grandkids. Yeah. So I, I want to draw something out of everything we've talked about. So, um, the notion that people are looking, people are looking for people that are just like them. Right. And so when we talk to people about getting kind of content out there and building a name for yourself and a voice for yourself, if you are speaking to you, somebody like you or who you were five years ago, there's people out there seeking what it is you're offering, you know? So I, I think what the power of what you've done, first of all, is you went out there and told your story. You found a medium that gave you the ability to reach people, but also communities. I want you to come back to how like a community's function works on YouTube. I think that's really cool. Um, but I just want to drive home the notion that if, if you are speaking to the right people, they will find you because they're looking for you. Mm -hmm. This crowd in particular with keto, and I also want to draw out, you recognized something that even you fell prey to after years of kind of doing this or a long time of doing this and being sort of duped by a label. You thought we've got to start educating people about what they're looking for. And, and even though this kind of stuff isn't necessarily coaching per se. This is the kind of stuff people look for. These are the tools and the resources and the information that people look for that allow them to then feel comfortable with you and view you as an expert in the marketplace. I'm, I'm sure that's not what you were planning to do at the time. Like, 
not necessarily, right? You were just like, people need to know this. Boy, I'm pissed. It said avocado mayonnaise and it's actually soybean oil mayonnaise with a suggestion of avocado mayonnaise. This pisses me off and I'm going to call them out about it. And this, then there's people that have like, damn, that happened to me too, right? Mm-hmm. So they can relate to you. And it's so important. Um, and, and so thank you for sharing that as, as different types of content. And most importantly, you're speaking to the actual end consumer of your content. What I see a lot of health coaches doing on YouTube, Instagram, is we're speaking in gobbledygook. We're speaking in sort of coaching term or healthcare terms that our average health consumer, you might sound smart and it makes you sound like you know what you're talking about, but but they're not, they're not really sure. You know, so I, I love the fact that you're meeting your audience where they're at. There's a couple questions here that I want to dig into. Um, so Janice is saying, Hey, the characters on the cereal boxes are always looking down at the kids level. So true. That's interesting. Okay. So this is a little bit of a departure, but I want to hear your opinion on this. And I I touch on this. So Todd is saying the owner of the business that he works for mentioned to a couple of us that she's pre-diabetic and that she's been advised to eat several small snacks throughout the day to keep her blood sugar stable. All I could think of was be careful if you want to keep your job. Any advice in that situation from the two crazy ketos? So one of the things that's been interesting for me as I went through the primal course and doing the advanced primal course, the master course, Mm -hmm. is for what we do, we try to educate. On, on YouTube and people just want to know an answer, but as a coach, our job is to help people figure it out and not teach right. um, or not do extensive teaching. So it's always been interesting. So the two crazy ketos, Joe is going to really try to educate that person on insulin and the fact that every time we eat, we have an insulin reaction. A lot of people think it's only carbohydrates or sugar that's going to create an insulin mm-hmm. reaction, but it's anytime you eat. And we want, it's insulin is a good thing. People think, oh no, you never want to have insulin. Yes, you do. Insulin's a good thing. It's a growth hormone. It's a precursor hormone. We just want to control how much insulin and how many times. And so I try to educate them on if we cut back the amount of times, then we won't have as much insulin and that will stabilize your blood sugar. Honestly, we're we're all supposed to be in and out of ketosis, no matter what diet you're on. You you should be making a little bit of ketones when you're sleeping. But the problem is, is a standard American diet. We eat so much sugar, our glucose goes up, and it never comes way back down where it's supposed mm-hmm. to be. So, I a lot of times what I do is try to just say like, I want you to take a look at this thing. Even if you I even when we work with new people, I always tell them like. When you first start, I don't care how many times a day you eat. You want to eat 20 times a day, that's fine. But don't eat sugar, pasta, grains, carbs, fruit, anything like that. Eat all the meat, all the fat you want because it's hard enough to dump all of the other stuff. We'll worry about how often and how much later. And a lot of times that helps them off right on the bat. Yeah, I I think that it, I have to always maintain the thought that I need to be invited into somebody's situation Mm -hmm before I speak. And that's really hard, especially again, I mean, I've been working with children for 30 years. And so I am used to leading the discussion, right? Like I'm deciding like as kids pastor, this is what we're talking about this week. And this is how we're going to talk about it this week. But when it comes to interacting with adults, you know, I may have all the answers, but if I'm not invited into their circumstance, then I'm going to be, you know, met with frustration and resistance and, you know, now I'm put myself in a very odd situation. So I don't mind sharing, like I will lead. If I hear somebody talk about, you know, diabetes, I can say like, Hey, you know, my mom actually, uh, reversed her type two diabetes or put her type two diabetes in remission. If you ever want to chat about it, like, I'd love to, you know, share my thoughts on it. Like, this is what I've seen, but then I leave it there. And then I need them to come and, you know, talk to me because, you know, it's funny. It, some people just naturally, I mean, we, we go to a large church, we had like 500 kids in our, you know, kids ministry. And so there's thousands of people and they know us. And some people who, if they don't know us well, they'll see us. And then like, 
you know, run the other way. Cause they're thinking that we're going to like preach about the way that we eat. If you, if you know us at all, you know, like you have to pull it out of me for, mm-hmm. for me to talk to you about it, because I want us to have other discussions. I want you to know that like, I'm not your, your priest. I, you know, you don't have to confess me. Some people are like eating something and they're like apologizing because they're, <laughs> you know, they're worried like, Oh no, like full confession. Like I need to tell you like, Oh my gosh, I had macaroni and cheese today. And it's like, that's okay. We can still be friends. Like mm-hmm. I'm not a weirdo. So, you know, I always want to maintain an approachability. That's my best shot of having influence in your life later on. So maybe you're you're not ready to hear from me, but what might make you, you know, be a client or, you know, just somebody that wants to talk to me about the way that I eat. My best shot is to to maintain kind of a boundary of like I understand that I'm not Um, it's not okay for me to just kind of presume you want to change your lifestyle until you've invited me in. Yeah. So Todd, feel free to, um, unmute yourself. My first question here in terms of all I was thinking was, you know, be careful if you want to keep your job. So first of all, is this job within this realm? Um, do you feel like the owner of your business was asking for advice? Cause the one thing I have learned is to not give advice unless asked. No one gives a crap about my opinion unless they've actually asked for my opinion that that's what I've decided. Um, so I guess my, my question here is, are you looking to potentially be able to help and you want to find a way to be invited to ask for help? Um, tell me a little bit about kind of this question exactly and kind of what you want help navigating. Yeah, it, it definitely wasn't a direct um, request for help or information. So I. I just wanted to hear what she was saying and and to continue to hear her you know concerns about this if, if it comes up again yeah. but um yeah i I didn't want to it, it it's always it's always hard you know you you want to um relay some information or find out how someone is doing regarding their situation, you know, like, oh, that must be kind of scary to hear about that pre-diabetes or something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was like the other person that was in overhearing her or hearing her comment was more like, you know, trying to give her help or whatever, or saying something like, yeah, I I could never eat a lot of, I don't, I don't know. I can't remember, but yeah. um, No, but I I think, I mean, obviously um, this couple has a lot of experience. So I thought maybe, and I, and I, and their, their comments were, were great. So it was good to hear their information. Yeah. I mean, I, I I think you could kind of view this as an opportunity to practice some coaching. And I, I heard you say it right in there. Boy, this is where empathy comes in, right? Joe, boy, getting that diagnosis must have been scary. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, you know, say more about that. it just opens you up as an opportunity for her to speak and to kind of share how she feels. And it's, you know, my doctor said to, you know, eat uh, multiple small snacks that they did to keep your sugar up. Well, that's interesting. Did they explain why? Or do you understand why? And and just just gives you an opportunity to kind of let them talk because then you can become more trusted without being seen. And then as always, this is something you learn in master coach and Joe can probably comment on this before you give advice, ask permission first. (laughs) Hey, would it be helpful? I know a little bit about this. You know, would it be helpful if, you know, Joe, what are your thoughts there? So it's, it's funny, like Rachel was saying, you have to be invited in, even with our own family. Like we have family members who are like, oh, I'm struggling. But until that family member invites me in, I can't tell you what to do. You know, you can't even tell somebody what to do as a coach, but you can, they've invited you in a little bit more. But it's, here's a good example. I look for ways, like you were talking about, create empathy, maybe mention something that's kind of, a, I don't want to say backhanded, but it's like hints towards maybe I can help you, but let you ask more. For example, the other day we were in the store, we were in BJ's and I'm buying 
a bunch of meat. And a lot of times, I mean, people make comments about our car. Like we would go in at like 12 <laughs> dozen eggs, like 10 pounds of bacon. That's a conversation starter you right know? there. <laughs> we said years ago, like I would go whatever, whatever pasture raised eggs were on sale. If they're on sale, I'm buying a bunch of them. Somebody would always make a comment about your cart. I'm like, how come nobody ever made a comment about my cart when I had 10 packages of Oreo cookies? Right. Only when I have all of this bacon. And usually it's like, you're going to die if you keep eating that. But I, they were selling something in BJ's and saying like, this, one serving of this has six servings of fruit and vegetables. And did you know you need all of this? I so want to say something like, <laughs> no, that, you will see how much sugar is in there. Like nobody needs 12 servings of fruit in one cup. Like go right. eat an orange. That If you want to eat something, I don't even do that, but it, I'd rather you eat an orange. But what we'll do is try to create a way to have a conversation. So for example, in this situation, maybe say, wow, like have that empathy. You know, yeah, my mother-in-law had type two diabetes and she was able to reverse it. And hopefully they'll come back with you. Really? How what can you talk do? to me about like, what did they do? Like, so I don't flat out tell them until they ask. A lot of times we were talking about ingredients on in stores, on product labels. We were talking about this on our live stream today. Like we will go into Costco and see somebody pick up a keto label product that I know does not have good ingredients. Right. I really want to just go up and grab, if you're keto, please don't eat that. Like the number two <laughs> ingredient is coconut sugar. Like, I don't care how many carbs it is. A lot of times they're lying. They're allowed to be off by 20%. Don't, don't, please don't, but they're not inviting me in. So what will we do? We'll walk up and flip around our camera and start talking about this product. Like it's for our channel hoping that they overhear us. And many times they do. Hey, are you doing keto? I heard you. Can you talk to me a little bit? Mm -hmm. And it opens up this conversation of why this is not a good product. We didn't approach them. They approached us. We just presented them with an opportunity of why they should approach us. Yeah. I love it. Catherine's popping in here saying she's actually, if she's actually open to a dialogue, you might mention that the ADA is now recommending a low carb diet and ask her, ask if her doctor has discussed that, then maybe refer her to Dr. Westman's book and your carb confusion. Do not imply her doctor's wrong. I would agree. And that, you know, better, I would agree. Just try leading questions. So again, this is kind of creating empathy and, you know, again, this is more coaching and, and providing kind of a, a resource, an agnostic resource that you can, that you can provide. But also, you know, if, if you're here on this call, chances are you're either in our course, graduated from our course, or are interested in enrolling in our course. And so at some point that tells me you want to be a coach. And this is an opportunity for you to kind of practice some coaching skills that kind of open up this dialogue and invite, it, it, it could be a little bit dicey to try to transition your boss into being a health coaching client, but I've seen people do it. Just be careful. And just, again, always be open, always be coaching, not, you know, with, without judgment. I know Aaron talks about that all the time in the master coach course. Um, everything is done without judgment. Um, and, and providing resources and things can be, can be really helpful. And I think when people know that you have become a source of resources, a lot of times that opens things up, um, as well. So thank you. Thank you for, uh, coaching Todd through that. That was awesome. Um, so I had in here, so, so you had your own experience and, and that, that got you pretty far. How long had you had your YouTube channel and stuff before you decided to jump into the course? Uh, well, let's see, I, we did the course this year. So it's been four years. We started the YouTube channel in 2018 and really, we really made the YouTube channel like, okay, we're going to do something with us. Um, 2019 KetoCon. We, we went to KetoCon with 250 subscribers and came home and said, we are on a mission to change the world now. We need to create a community so that, because we did this alone. Everybody yeah. that we knew was telling us you're going to die. <laughs> like saturated fat is bad. The, why, how could you say seed oil is bad? It's a heart healthy oil. That's the label, right? Heart <laughs> healthy. And so we did it alone. And when we realized that there were a lot of people that were in this situation where they didn't, we had each other at least, well, I, we didn't have each other for the first eight months. It was all me, but at least Rachel supported me, but there was a lot of people where they have nobody. And we're like, okay, we need to create a community. People need 
to be able to have someone to share their experiences with. And we tell people all the time, you need to share your story because you think you're alone. You think nobody else knows, but there's somebody else out there going through the same thing. So when you tell people your story, they're going to be like, oh, okay, they did it. I can do it. Or they understand. And so that is really what the focus of us is. Yes, we're about education, but our thing is, is we're going to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. I still make mistakes with labels. I have still come home with a product and then been like, oh my gosh, how did I not see I that? See and I march it right back to Costco now. One of, that's one of the great things. Costco will take it back, yeah. you know, but we still make mistakes. We we still like, we'll have something and be like, oh, that wasn't the greatest thing in the world to eat. I mean, not off a of keto, but like getting something at a restaurant and realizing later on that had a lot of seed oils in it. And, but now I know. Yeah. And it's just being genuine. That's the biggest thing that everybody yeah. wants. Your coaches, wherever you anybody, your clients, they just want to hear that you're genuine. Right. Yeah. I think that if you try to like be like somebody else and try to create like a cookie cutter type of thing, it's just not authentic. And people, you know, know that right away. So, I mean, we're the way that we are. We're, we're at the age that we are, you know, like, I've got gray hair. Joe is bald. Like, you know, we don't maybe necessarily look like somebody that, you know, you're thinking like, oh my gosh, like they're, they look like a movie star or something. So, you know, instead of saying like, well, I've got to change all of me in order to make me like interesting or something, you know, people would mm -hmm. want to approach just being your authentic self like you will attract the audience that, that you need to, you Absolutely. know what I mean? And it's too exhausting to try to be somebody else. Like you're just, you have to be you. Um, and so we're, we're caught in our own like mistakes sometimes. Like Joe says like, dang it. Like I just brought this cheese home and like, it's, you know, it had something like some garbage ingredient, like we make mistakes and, we don't edit that out. We're totally honest of like, look what we did. Look, look at this stupid rookie move that we yeah. just made. And, you know, I think that us just being us, I mean, there, you, some people you're not going to appeal to, but that's okay. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you try to be somebody that you're not the person that you like, maybe fooled at the yeah. beginning, trying to be somebody else, you're just going to lose them when they find out that you are not for real. Yeah, we have a motto on our channel that I like to use. Uh, it's a, you hear a little bit about it in the course, but it's more of 80, 20. And I always tell I have I would we call the 90, 10 rule. And that is strive for perfection when it comes to your eating lifestyle. But no, you are never going to achieve it. You are never going to be perfect. And 90 percent is good enough. So if if 90% of the time you were eating really good and you're eating really clean at home and you go out to eat and and you have a salad that has some seed oil in it, don't worry about it. Yeah. So long as that that is not 90% of your diet. Yeah. If it's once in a blue moon, you're fine. But no, you're never going to be, people will come to us and be like, I can't believe you had that. And I'm like, you know, somebody said you need to get rid of Wi-Fi. You can't. <laughs> It's in every, <laughs> even if I get rid of Wi-Fi in my house, it's, right. it's coming from my neighbors, oh, you know, it. think about like, you're taking a shower. There's more chemicals in the shower than a lot of times than the food you eat. So work on the best thing you can. And then just tell right. everybody, I tell people all the time, you know, my biggest struggle is sleep. I gained 15 pounds from COVID. And my biggest problem is I struggle to sleep. I want to sleep three or four hours a night. I, I've got too much work to do, but I know that is the biggest problem. My my diet is on point. Yeah. But I still struggle with the other 20%. It happens. Todd uh, is asking again, he's interested, Joe, if uh, you needed some experience before you felt good at open-ended questions because he's really having a hard time with them. So can you share some, maybe some of what you learned you know, because I know you were talking about how it was really the master coach course that really brought the the coaching part to life. Um, and the, the reason it's like that, folks, is the primary course is for everyone. So regardless of what time zone you're in, regardless of what your schedule is like, everyone can take that course because it's completely self-study. And we've got as much coaching content as we can get into a self-study format as possible in that primary course. It, but the master coach course, I think what makes it so valuable is that in-person training? I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe you have some other thoughts on that, but can you talk, talk a little bit about what it took for you to get comfortable with the coaching side of what you do? So, so 
let me bridge this. So you started the the YouTube channel, putting out fantastic content, building a community, putting stuff out there. And uh, I heard Rachel say, Joe, you said, you know, I kind of feel like with all these people asking us for help that I need some training and I need to kind of, you know, have some, an education around this. So you went in search of a school. I think it was Nisha Berry. I think you said that had referred you to us, right? And we had a conversation um, and you decided to go ahead and get not just the first one, but also Master Coach and Primal Pro because of kind of what you wanted to do. Can you speak a little bit about kind of, kind of where in that process you kind of really felt you got the bulk of the coaching chops and kind of what you've been able to leverage your education in some way? Okay. Um, yeah, I investigated a lot of coaching. It's something that Rachel and I really talked about, like just learning more about coaching. Mm-hmm. And I knew there were some of the things that were out there that were like keto, but I'm like, okay, I know keto. Uh, and, and I am blessed to be friends with a lot of the, the keto gurus. You know, mm-hmm. you look at like Dave Feldman, who, if you want to know about yeah. cholesterol, go, go, re- go watch cholesterol code. I mean, he, the man's doing amazing things with cholesterol research and Dr. Ken Berry and Dr. Sivas. So I'm, I'm, we are blessed that we have them as friends and we can talk to them. And I know a lot about keto from all of the research that I've done, but I'm like, I, I need to learn about coaching. And so we talked to a bunch of our different friends and yeah, Nisha Berry was like, you know, she investigated a lot of them and she was like, listen, primal is probably 95% in line of the way we feel. And I also talked to our friend, Kim Howerton and every person that I knew that I respected were like, yep, primal is the way to go. And so I knew going into it that when it came to information on way of eating that I was going to know a lot of it, but there was still a lot that I didn't know where there was eye opening, like the the 80, 20, 20%, you know, of your nutrition is going to be based on your movement, your sleep and your stress. Those kind of things I learned. The last four chapters of the main course, I got a lot out of because that's where it really started diving into how to coach, especially when you started listening to Aaron, like, giving almost examples like client, coach, client, Mm -hmm. coach. But the master course has been invaluable because of the practice, like every Thursday night doing that. And it's been embarrassing to be able to jump on. And usually you have to, when you're role-playing the client, the only thing you do is just spill your guts about what's going on in your personal life. (laughs) But it's been great because every single week I've been getting coached on what I'm struggling with. So that's been awesome. As far as the open-ended questions, I still struggle with it, but I think I'm getting better. I just start asking questions like, tell me more, tell me more. And, and, and it struggles for me because Rachel's really good at this. But for me, I just want to tell you what to do. Rachel is really good at letting you figure it out. And I just want to tell you, just stop eating that. You don't want to feel, you want to feel better? Stop eating the keto bread. It's garbage, but I can't because that's not going to help you. So my, the way I coach now, and when we do our discovery calls, this is what I tell people. I equate coaching to raising a child. Yeah. When, when we had our kids and we, as we got married, we were very different parents. I was all in my boys. Cause I have two boys. She had one. My boys are going to know how to do everything. Like, and Rachel was like, I want to coddle them (laughs) because they were growing up. I'm like, you need to make them do their own laundry. I don't mind if you do it once in a while, but they need to do it. They need to learn how to cook. And she's like, why? I'm like, because I don't want my boys to marry the first girl that's going to cook for them because they don't know how to cook or they don't know how to do their laundry. (laughs) They need someone to take care of me. (laughs) Our goal with our children was to make it so that they can become self-efficate, right? So that they could take care of themselves. Well, that's our goal as a coach. I want you to not meet me in 90 days. Yeah. I, I, that it's like, I want to fire you as a client in 90 days, not because you're a horrible client, because I don't want your money, you know, because I want you to be able to do this on your own. And that, that has been a struggle for me because I just want to tell you what to do. But if I just tell you what to do, you're not going to know what to do. I need you to figure it out. The biggest struggle that we both have is the imposter syndrome and we still have it. Yeah. I still have it a hundred pounds down six years. The amount of comments that we get and you saw Catherine, like you've changed my life. Mm -hmm. Um, People going, Oh my gosh, I never thought about that. I still every morning wake up going, why do we have a channel? Why does anybody listen to us? Oh my gosh, how am I going to help this person? 
Yeah. Like, who am I to help them? I still have 15 pounds to lose after six years. Or, you know, I gained 15 pounds from COVID. I have no business coaching people. I still go through that every single day. Yeah. And I think that that is, I'm thankful for those feelings. I I never want to get to the point where it, it's, it, that I don't take it as like, this is this is really something I don't deserve to be in. Like we need to always come from that humility. It keeps me in touch with the fact that, you know, on the other side of this coaching call or on the other side of this conversation is a person that is con concerned. Like they've got worries, they've got doubts. Can I do this? So I I'm thankful the fact that I feel inadequate. I'm never going to arrive at like, I, I got this life thing. Like I, I matched the moment you feel like you are too big for your britches. That's you're going to make some serious mistakes in your life. So I'm thankful for, you know, as much as it is kind of a thorn in the side that you're constantly feeling like, Oh man, I don't ever think I'm, I'm going to feel like, you know, the master um, that is, that is a good thing because yeah. it, it can help me always stay in touch with like, you know, I, I feel the fear, like there is a, there's a sympathy and there's an empathy for whoever we are chatting with because they feel like, oh my gosh, is this going to work for me? I mean, are things going to change? And I'm, you know, continuously in that same feeling as well that it, like, I know, like, I feel that. Yeah. Like yeah. you're, you're not the only person that's nervous here. We're both nervous. Right. To a certain degree, you need, people need to be able to relate to you. You know, I don't know. Do you guys ever follow the, the fit to fat to fit guy? We interviewed mm -hmm. yeah. him, Rory Manning, right? So the guy who was like, always fit, always cut, you know, decided to see what it was actually like to be fat and unwell mm -hmm. and on purpose gained all this weight. He literally ate nothing but junk and food and processed food for like God knows how long, gained a crap ton of weight um, and then went, and tried to get fit again and realized this is a lot harder than I thought it was. You know, he put himself in a situation and, and granted, he also knows that his experience is different from someone who's always been the husky kid, who's always been overweight. So he he's aware of that. But he also had this like notion of when he was getting heavier and more overweight and out of shape in his mind, he's like, yeah, but this isn't really me. And it made him like just the way other people looked at him. He just wanted to scream, this is not really me. But then he realized how hard it was to get back. It was not on a dime that he was able to just lose it all. And it was easy. That food kept calling to him. It was harder to, to lose that weight than he really thought it would ever be. You know, so I, I that really did a lot for him in terms of his ability to relate to his clients and be relatable. So I think the more you try to strive for perfection, the, that's where imposter syndrome comes from. And you're, you're absolutely right. You know, we all feel it. I got a couple of things I want to add in here. Uh, Janice is saying she's been keto for seven years and in healthcare for 30. I could not speak about it in a hospital setting. I actually turned my, my family physician onto it. He knows I won't take statins. Um, uh, Michelle is saying she was referred by Nisha as well to the program. And uh, she's also saying his Let's see. The, the fit to fat guy. Oh, the fit to fat to fit. Yeah. His mental health was affected so much by this for the second time around. You're absolutely right. Um, so there, there's a lot to be said about kind of relatability here. Um, Janice is saying, I find that when I ask my clients and what do you think you could do about that? I get ideas from what they come up with when. Yeah. when absolutely. That's why it's a collaborative relationship, right? That's what we talk. It's a client led collaborative relationship. And, um, I just, I think what the master coach drives home is, I think it allows you to experience it in a totally different way, because not only are you practicing your coaching skills, but you're also being coached too. And you can feel the difference, which I think is really cool. Um, I want to make sure we kind of touch on like the business aspect of this too. So can you, um, speak a little bit about kind of how you use YouTube to kind of build your audience, how this has kind of led you into coaching um, and kind of, cause you're still building your business. You're still in the throes of this, right? You're still figuring things out. Do you mind kind of giving our folks a little bit of a sneak peek as to lessons learned, what you're doing now, where you're finding ways to kind of monetize what you're doing, so on? I'll tell you this, don't underprice yourself. 
Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank we you. learned that the hard way. So, I mean, as far as coaching, I mean, we've been doing YouTube for a while and, and we tell people all the time, you do not need a coach. I, I know this sounds bad, especially talking to a bunch of coaches. But we tell people you don't need a coach. If you just want to learn how to do keto and it's different because again, we're telling you on our channel how to do things and coaches, we're trying to walk you through things. So it's a little different, but I tell people here, here's the deal about being a coach. Mm -hmm. Everything that we're going to coach you on, you could figure out on your own. All of the information's out there on our channel or on other channels. I tell you, be careful of who you're listening to and, and try to focus on one or two because everybody's got different views. The difference is, if you have my favorite, one of my favorite movies is Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And if you know that movie, I, I use this analogy a lot, but the whole idea of that movie is, is that Indiana Jones' dad, played by Sean Connery, wrote a diary to find the Holy Grail. And he's using this diary. And let's say the coach is the diary. The diary is a coach. He's using this diary to help get himself along. Could he find the Grail without the diary? Yes. It would probably take a lot longer. And it really comes into play at the end of the movie where he's got to cross the path and, and he's got to spell out a word. And he's trying to remember it. And he goes and takes a step and then he goes, oh, wait a second. It starts with a J. And <laughs> you, he could have gotten across without the diary, but the diary helped him. You step here, you step here, you step here. That's all the coach is going to do. A coach is going to help you figure out which way to navigate. You can do it on your own. It just may take 20 times longer. Right. So what we started doing was just with our YouTube, people were like, can you coach us? I'm like, I don't know. And that's where we started looking into like getting to doing what primal, but it really, we just kind of put it out there. Like, listen, it's on our website. If you want it, we never really promoted it that much. And a couple of people would sign up. And then we started talking about it a little bit more and more people were coming in and, and we did a, we didn't do a lot of marketing. I think that the way we've really started building our business is our podcast. Hmm. So our whole thing has always been, if we can help one person, what we're doing is worth it. Rachel for years wanted to do a podcast. I'm like, I don't know anything about podcasts. I don't have an amazing radio voice. And this sounds bad, but I don't know how to monetize a podcast. And like, I, you know, we're already doing all of this other stuff. Right. We're already right. doing five videos a week. We're already doing two live streams. Like, do I really want to do something else? And then you can't even make any money off of it. And we went to KetoCon last year and we met somebody who said his name is Adam Shively. And he's like, I can help you monetize a podcast and teach you how to do a podcast. So I said, Rachel, okay, we'll do it. Because again, if we can help one person, if there's one person who doesn't watch YouTube, but they listen to podcasts and they change their life, it would be worth it because changing their life may change their entire genealogy, like all of their kids and their grandkids and everything else. So we came up with this idea on our podcast called the keto audit. And we tell people, here's what we're going to do. If you've been doing keto, if you're one of our subscribers, you can go and sign up for our podcast. We call it the keto audit. Come on, you tell your story. What was life like before keto? Tell us a little bit about keto, like how it's changed your life. Now tell me something that you're struggling with. And we, on our podcast, coach them through one thing. And what ends up happening, and we in the end of the and the end, we tell people if you want a keto audit, go ahead and sign up. But all of a sudden, people are like, "Oh, so that's what it's like to be coached." I need that. And the next thing we knew, we had a whole bunch of people going and signing up for coaching because they now understand how we coach. So we were basically giving a free coaching session for everybody to hear, but it hmm. led to clients. Where we, I think, really um, had a lot of fun was with a group. We we did a group, the first group thing. I mean, I would love to steer away from a lot of one-on-one -on -one because one-on-ones take a lot of time. They just take a lot of time. And we were, we priced ourselves at $40 for a half hour because we didn't oh, know man. what we were doing. Well, and you have to, you have to think to yourself, like how many people can you authentically see in a day and like serve them right. like well. And you know, you prepare for the coaching session, you have the coaching session, you like are it, when you finish it, like you're taking notes, you're writing things down. I figure every 30 minute coaching session is at least an hour and a half to two Easily. hours. Easily. 
easily. So you have to just like, you have to kind of be smart about it. That was the hardest thing. The hardest thing for me, because you have this heart of like serving others that right. you're like, is it authentic if you charge money for it? You know and I mean? For four years, we had five jobs each for us to be able to like pay the money for a camera and like be able to travel to a conference and like all of these things. And so we had to get past the point of like, you can never make any money. And, and the only authenticity is everything that you give away for free because yeah. we had to realize, Hey, we can serve more people if we can do this as a job. If I can't, if I don't ever charge for anything, then that means that I have to keep all of these other jobs. And then I, I can only reach as many people as I can do. We were so burned out. Yeah. We had all these jobs and then we were doing five videos on YouTube. And I, I say YouTube, this was the hardest full-time job that pays part-time money, but it is the most rewarding thing we've ever done in our life. Yeah, And it was our friend, Cindy Miller. She's on, on Facebook as Ask Nurse Cindy. She was like, you have a mission and a message here, and this needs to be your career. But it was yeah. hard to make that leap. Well, and so here's, you know, thank you for sharing that because this comes up so much with people who feel guilty. I, I, this is what I've often heard people say. I feel guilty charging people to be healthy. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, no, that's not what you're charging people for. And to your point, if you're not making, if you're not able to earn a living doing this, then first of all, you either will be limited in your reach and how many people you can help, but you also will likely not be around to help them. You'll, you'll honestly just go, I, I hear this all the time with personal trainers, people that got a personal training certification and realize I can't make any money doing this because I'm too busy tra uh, trading dollars for hours and not being paid enough for those hours. It's why in the course, we talk about being careful about that, about how you communicate your pricing rather than some sort of an hourly charge, making it a program package. And I had a conversation with a neighbor and who ended up hiring me. And we talked about the price of my program. And I, I kind of prefaced this a little bit saying, look, I'm trying to make this affordable, but I'm also trying to make it feel like an investment. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned after my 10 years in business is if people feel invested financially, then they are invested in many other ways. Mm -hmm. And if the cost of my one-on-one -on -one program is too high, that's cool because I've got a group program where I am teaching the same stuff. The difference is my coaching sessions are now with a group of you instead of one of you. So you're now all kind of sharing the cost of that time. And then to your point, you know, there's just like an e-course, but a lot of your stuff even is free. You're already giving so much away. That charging for the actual coaching is really just an opportunity for your clients to invest in themselves. And you're there with them along that journey. And we actually learned that the hard way. I mean, we've, we've had five since February when we started actually coaching, when I started the primal course, co you know, the primal course and we started, okay, okay we're going to do this as I'm learning. Yeah. Um, we've had five price changes. Yeah. And I mean, and that's not a long period of time to have had five price changes. Right. But so when we first signed up for Primal Club Pro and I, I started messing around with Coach Catalyst, we said, okay, let's, we have no idea what we're doing. We have this community. Let's go to, we have channel supporters. We use Mighty Networks. We, we've kind of gone away from um, Patreon and use Mighty Networks because you can really have a community feel and do live streams and stuff. And there's like live chat and everything. Yeah. So we went to some of our channel supporters, people who are giving us a little bit of money so that we can run our channel. And we said, listen, we've put together this 30 day program. We called it energy keto. It was based off of the 21 day transformation course, mm -hmm. but we added stuff to it. We're going to ask you guys, we're going to give it to you for free for, and we want you to go through it and give us your opinion and what can we change? And there was daily lessons for 30 days. Wow. 54 people signed up. Do you know how many people completed it? Six. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Six. Because it was free. Because it was exactly. free. They did yeah. not care. 
So every month we've always done a challenge, a free challenge in with our community. We say, hey, this month we're going to focus on this. This month, Rachel's like, hey, we want to move and celebrate. So every day you got to do a dance, three minutes. And she's putting in Instagram post every day like of her nuts. dancing. We've done different types of challenges, like sleep challenges. We've done whatever you can name it. We've probably done it. We did, we started something with Dr. Ken Berry called beef, butter, bacon, egg, which is where you eat nothing except for beef, butter, bacon, and egg, beef being <laughs> any ruminant animal. And his point was, he actually has a challenge out. If you ate nothing but beef, butter, bacon, and egg, one coffee a day, zero sweeteners. That's the only thing you're allowed to eat for 90 days. You cannot gain fat no matter how much you eat. That and if you gain 10 pounds of fat, he will pay you a thousand dollars because he's like, You can't overeat beef. If you're he's like, I don't care how many times a day you eat, you're not going to be able, able to overeat that food. So we decided to bring this to the community last year. So this year we did it again as a challenge. Last year we did it to prove him wrong. We didn't prove him wrong. We, wrong. we were eating over 4,000 calories a day and both lost body fat hmm. um, and not really exercising either. But we did it as a community this year and we did it for free. And then we said, you know what? We're going to create a course. We're going to dive deep into like all of the plant toxins. Why does eating ruminant animals, why is ruminant animals better than even eating a lot of poultry? What is the difference? And really go through this course. And it was every day you got a lesson every day. There was a, and we, we originally wrote it as a, as a, a, like a five paragraph thing. And then we said, you know what, let's video us doing this. We'll basically read it and they get a video lesson every day, three to four minute video lesson. And then once a week, we're going to do a live check-in. So this is a group course on, we did it on Crowdcast. Now, if you go by what Primal says, this should be a hundred dollar thirty day challenge because there was a live aspect to it. Mm -hmm. We charged thirty bucks, right? But thinking, and that was the hardest and thing. And we figured maybe fifteen people will sign up, right? Two hundred and forty people signed up, and every one of them completed it. And at the end, we added from the people who reported their weight loss in thirty days, there was three thousand eight hundred pounds lost. Yeah. So it was worth it. And here's the best part about Giving that Giving it course. away free, we did nothing. We did nothing. But Nobody lost part. anyway. We only charged $30. <laughs> so you say, well, you didn't, that's not that great. But the curriculum is now written. So right. now we can run that same course again in January. And even if we want to bump it up a little bit, now the only work is the one hour check-in every week. Right. Yeah. Because Working the hard part was done. And then it only took us like 30 hours to write it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love that. What a great story. I got a couple of comments here and then we got to wrap up. So Catherine's saying time is valuable. It makes sense to have a coach if they can save you time. Um, it would take to research and design your own program. And then it says charging for your expertise gives greater credibility too. If I trust a coach with my time and money, I'm going to take them very seriously, which is very true. Elizabeth is asking, what is a fair price to charge per month? Can somebody tell me? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all tell us. <laughs> I can tell you what we're charging right now. We are charging for a 60 day program, which is mostly it's an, it's a 60 to 90 minute, like initial call after a, a, dis, a free discovery call. It's a 60 to 90 minute, like let's really dive into what's going on. And then a weekly check-in and we're charging $550 for that. That's what we're charging for it. And I feel like we're overcharging, but you know, we've had people say no. And I'm like, okay, do we have a lot of free stuff out there? We have a lot of free stuff. And we, we've had more discovery calls where people call up and they're like, you don't need us. Like, just do this. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I, I just, <laughs> think a lot of this too, when it comes to pricing comes from your own sort of internal sort of relationship with money and your own sort of mindset around money and kind of where you've come from, you know, and you know, if you've grown up or you've lived for a long time around money scarcity, it's hard to get comfortable charging really what you're worth here. I, I would say you could probably charge more, but look, I'm Aaron and I all say this on our podcast all the time. You have to feel comfortable with your price. Okay. And if you feel comfortable with your price and you're able to live the life you want to live and pay your bills and all of that, then it's the right price. It's nobody else's job to tell you you should be charging more. However, if you're charging that price 
but you're barely making ends meet. You're always wondering if you're going to make uh, what you need that month. You're not able to grow your business. You're not able to turn around and reinvest in things. Then it's, it's, you're not charging enough. Yeah. Okay. So that's the kind of the way you need to think about this. So in terms of what's a fair price, you need to go into this from a different perspective. So first of all, what has gone into your program, right? First of all, we're not charging people for time. Can we please get away from that? There is so much more that goes into your price. I heard the term expertise. I heard the term just investment, your own personal investment and what you're doing with this relationship. The outcomes people get, you were just talking about how much more weight they lost because they paid 30 bucks instead of zero, okay? So there's... The dollar value that's attached to this is so much more than the time you spend face to face with people. I also heard you say how much it time it takes to get prepared for a session, right? You, you run to, over, like you know. Yeah. I mean, how many times have you had a thirty minute call? It next thing you know, it's forty five minutes in. Like it's, I I want to shut them down, but sometimes I just can't. Right. Like, I figure thirty minutes to prepare, thirty minutes for the call, thirty minutes to wind down afterwards because some of the calls are draining. Mm -hmm. But I will say this with money and this is, I mean, well, we probably increased $550 at some point. Yeah. I, I think as we, we're, we're taking the primal pro that we purchased and tweaking it for the weight, what we do, because there are certain yeah. things within primal pro that are not super keto. Like right. we don't do a lot of fruits and stuff. So we have to tweak it. And, and when that final thing is done, yeah, we'll probably increase the cost of our program. But I think the biggest thing, I, I don't know where it came from. It's only about a month ago. I think we mentioned it on the podcast with you where mm -hmm. I said, you know, when I did do CrossFit and I was only paying $50 for CrossFit, which is unheard of. Okay. Yeah. Right. But that's why they closed. Um, <laughs> but when I was paying $50, I did not miss CrossFit because it was $50. Right. I had a membership for Planet Fitness for two years and I never went. Right. Because it was 10 bucks. I right. know people who sign up to go to Primal to Planet Fitness just to be able to go sit in the massage chair or back when they used to get free donuts and bagels. I paid just to be like, that's my gym as I drive past it. Like, not going 10 in. bucks to say, yeah, I'm a gym member. Just do something. Yeah. It just does. I know oh, it does for me. Yeah. So look, guys, when it when it comes to pricing, here's here's the way I did this. I figured out how much money I needed to make in order to make this work. And my husband and I did sit down because my, my past career, you guys made, might've heard me say this, but I made a lot of money in that other job, but I had to, in order to do it. Cause it wasn't worth it otherwise. And honestly, it, clearly it wasn't worth it period. Cause I left. Right. But I had this notion in my head that I had to make that amount of money. Cause I don't know, but, but when my husband and I really sat down and thought what kind of life we really wanted, then we backed into what we had to make what, you know, to just pay our obligations, that kind of thing. And we really kind of narrowed this down to a number and it was still a reasonable number. I mean, we were living in the suburbs of Chicago. We had a family of six. Like I, I was not going to be able to get by on 50 grand a, a year. Sorry, that wasn't going to work. You know, this needed to make us more money, but I didn't need to make like $400,000. I didn't need to make that. You know, we kind of, we brought this down to what we really kind of needed to live the life we wanted to live. Now I had a number right? That's my end number. And then you can break that down by what I need every month. So how am I going to recreate that? How, you know, and so this helps me back into how many, into, how many hours a week did I want to work? How much of that was going to be client facing time versus working on my business? So realistically, how many face-to-face -face hours did I have? And then how was I going to create that with one-on-one -on -one clients, group uh, programs and things of that nature. So mine is more like I have individual clients, but I also have group programs that I actually earn me more, um, doing things as groups. So my biggest advice is know your number and kind of back into it. Right. Um, and that'll help give you some sort of framework. Okay. A couple more things here, and then we got to roll. So Ali's asking, can you submit your own videos in Primal Pro if you want to use video versus clients reading lesson notes each week to make it interactive? Yep. Right. You can do that. Uh, oh, this is Sarah. Yep. Uh, that's productivity and billing ratios. I did it the same. Oh, that's what Sarah's saying. Yeah. So you can, so there's a lot of things. So, so you were saying how you're customizing yours, right? You want to change some of the 
Yeah. Content, now right? we, we actually are not using, we started off with coach catalyst, but it, I didn't like the way the coach catalyst did billing. So we are currently using get healthy. So okay. what we basically yeah. had to do is transcribe everything from all of the writings into get healthy. You have to basically put it into a PDF okay. format yeah. and then it emails it out. And that's the, what we're working on now. But uh, the, for us, we like get healthy because it allows us to incorporate Zoom. We can have Zoom meetings right within there. Very, yep. very similar, but it just a little bit more advanced. Are we going to stay with Get Healthy? I don't know. I know Aaron uses something else and I want to investigate that, but I paid for a year for Get Healthy. So I figure when yeah. I'm done, then I'll investigate. I've heard Get Healthy, I just, practice better. There's, there's, a couple there's of so them. many different ones out there, but I like, we really, after doing our group thing, what I really liked, and I think what people really liked was even though we had this, like written daily lesson, when you made it a three minute video, they loved it because they could look at you in the eye as you're saying it. Yeah. Instead of it just being kind of flat. And, and it's I mean, not that hard to do. And that's how I learn. Also, you know, you have to take in consideration what kind of learners do you have? Mm -hmm. Everybody is like, there's seven different ways to, you know, to, to present data, different, you know, people learn different ways. I mean, that was something that we brought out of kids ministry. If you're trying to get this point across, you need to present things in different ways. And so, you know, just being creative that way to be like, okay, if someone's an auto visual learner or, so, you know, and that's me, that that's something that you can also determine once you sit down, you know, with your client, what's the best way for, for them to receive information for some people like that need kind of more of a hands-on approach, you're going to have to leverage like things like journaling or, mm -hmm. you know, for, for them to kind of give you feedback or they need to take pictures of stuff and like share with you. So that really just kind of comes out of, you know, your interaction with your clients and trying to investigate, you know, what kind of learner are you? Like, what's the best way that I can serve you? My yeah. favorite thing about the primal course was the audio downloads. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I really miss it in master coach. So what I did was I actually bought an app that will read it to me. Oh, that's cool. And then, and then because there is every week you, you know, Aaron puts on replay for people who miss it. I then go listen to whatever that week's was, because that's how I learn. I learn by listening and watching. I do not learn by reading. No, and I love so that. I, I like the I like the fact that of recording videos or even recording audio for your clients to be able to listen to it instead of just reading it. Oh yeah. Yeah. So like within Primal Pro, what gets automatically uploaded is a, like a, the written lesson, but then there's also an audio, but it's Aaron, Aaron's voice. Mm -hmm. So anytime I do like a group program, cause uh, primal does, I do some corporate wellness coaching for primal and it's Aaron's voice in there. It doesn't matter to me, but, but my personal clients, I just took that audio out and I'll just re-record you. And you can use any mechanism really that'll save an MP3 file for you. And then you can just upload it there. Um, so awesome. This was so great. Thank you so much, you guys. I mean, I hope everybody took a, a little bit of something away and I hope everybody turns around and follows you, uh, two crazy ketos.com, right. And two crazy ketos on YouTube. You're on social media all over the place. All over so. the place. Thank you That's so awesome. much for having us tonight. We really it was so appreciate fun. It. Yeah. And those of you listening, if you're, um, if you're not a primal health coach already, we've got a black Friday special coming on. So call and talk to me about that. Um, check your inbox if you're in our email because there's an announcement. And I do think they have a Black Friday special and some select courses. I was just uh, going to ask you, I saw that email. Is that Black Friday course applying to all the new courses? Not all of them. There's just a couple of them. So, and, and it's in the email. So just, and there's a coupon code grateful. Just call me if you've got questions about it. We can talk about which ones, um, but we'll go from there. So thanks again, everybody. As always, the interactiveness is awesome. And Joe and Rachel, I just have to say, you guys work so well together. I just love how you feed off each other. Um, I can see that you guys love it and you're passionate and you're really good at it. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. All right. Thanks guys. Have a good Bye. night. Bye.